Hi, I'm Fred Burton with Stratfor. In this week's Above the Terror Line, we're going to examine some of the protective challenges facing the U.S. Secret Service in protecting President Obama in India and Indonesia. International trips involving the President of the United States are extraordinarily challenging and highly complex. We're going to examine two critical components of those operations, motorcades and counter-sniper activities. Let's take a look at some images. As I look at this picture, the first thing you need to take a look at is the entire street has been frozen. This is a secure chute from point A to point B. You see no traffic along this line. You've had the entire route screened for improvised explosive devices, and then it's posted with physical police presence, as you can see, lining the route. And in some cases, this is done a day ahead of time. In some cases, this is done hours ahead of time. You'll see the motor, motorcade configuration with the Indian police lead down here in the white. You see the beginning of the Secret Service lead vehicle. You see the limousines with the backup capability. This is a U.S. Secret Service follow car with a counter assault capability. This is probably a Indian uh, police vehicle with SWAT personnel inside it. And uh, in essence, the U.S. Secret Service uh, has assured that there's air cover along the route, usually with uh, helicopter surveillance. And once the motorcade starts, you're going to have a clear, secure path until it stops. A second aspect we want to examine is the counter-sniper capability. Here you'll see an arrival point for the President Obama and look at the counter-sniper capabilities at the rooftop. Uh, in essence, uh, you always want to take the high ground. Let's roll the videotape here and you'll see one of the corners. This is a uh, Indian uh, sniper team. What you don't see below the area here is uh, no doubt some sort of counter-sniper a weapon that they have. Uh, in essence, you'll have an individual that's responsible for using binoculars to look, and then you have a second person that their responsibility will be to shoot. Now let's take a look at uh, President Obama arriving in Indonesia and greeted by the Indonesian president uh, to continue along the counter-sniper tactical issue. Uh, you'll see here the this is a protected portico, which ideally is where you want to bring the president in. There will be a counter sniper capacity on either side uh, just on the lookout perspective. Uh, let's begin to roll the videotape here. Uh, you'll see a Secret Service agent, the advance agent, waiting. And here's the president's arrival. Right there you'll have an uh, Indonesian uh, protective agent, no doubt part of the uh, president of Indonesia's protective team, giving a report to his teammates. As you roll this through here, you'll see the Secret Service protective bubble. Uh, the Secret Service is always the one that's going to open the president's door. The president doesn't do that from the inside. Uh, only the Secret Service agents are going to bring him out once they know the area is secure. As you roll the videotape, you'll see the president exiting and greeted by the Indonesian president. The above the tear line aspect in the president's foreign trips are the extraordinary amount of complexity that takes place behind the scenes that most people never see. The logistics of moving motorcades from Washington to a foreign nation, the securing of those 24 by 7, the sweep of very granular stops for bombs, listening devices, hazmat, weapons of mass destruction, as well as snipers. Today we decided to just examine two very complex issues that uh, are pieces of the protection puzzle that ensure that the president's trip comes off without any incidents or any kind of problems from a security perspective.